The Night Beat starts right now. Tonight, two women say they're victims and they want you to hear their story. So last night, we showed you this man. You're about to see his face in a moment. He's 38-year-old Chong Young Mounts. He's accused of sexual assault and online impersonation, and it may not be the first time. The San Antonio Police Department thinks he's victimized more people. The night team's John Paul Badajoz spoke with two women who say that they were also his victim. I was completely sexually exploited and stolen from and left restrained in my house. Tied up, blindfolded, and left on her own to get out. And that woman who wants to remain anonymous says she's not the only one. I've never allowed someone to come into my apartment that I have never seen face to face and have myself blindfolded. Um, I beat myself up over that every day. Chong, do you have anything you want to say for yourself? Did you do it? Both of these women say they're victims of 38-year-old Chung Yoon Moons. He's facing a single charge of sexual assault and two of online impersonation. Anything you, want to say to Anything you want to say to your family? The San Antonio Police Department says Moons used someone else's picture on his Tinder profile and pretended to be that person. Investigators add he established an online relationship with the victim and then convinced her to play out a fantasy in December. Leaving the door unlocked and I would be blindfolded in my bedroom. Denitria Sedlock and the other woman are not the victims in SAPD's case, but they say the same things happened to them. They remember the moment they realized the person that tied them up was not the person from his dating app profile. I did say stop, but of course he didn't. Um, he did eventually stop, but on his own terms, not when I asked him to. You were at their mercy, basically. You know, so if you did try to fight back, you know, what, what would happen then? The women tell us they had to remove their own restraints and that they both had money stolen from their cash app. He was like, is this Spotify? Talking about my phone. I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, I made my own playlist. He's like, what's your password? Sedlock says $900 was taken from her and the other woman, 300 I replaced my phone. I got my money back. But what I don't get back is the person that I was that day. Both the women we spoke to do have cases with their police departments in Selma and Fredericksburg, and those agencies tell us they are in communication with SAPD. The women hope to add more sexual assault charges to Muntz's current charges, but say they've been told by authorities it'll be difficult because there was at least partial consent at some point. If you or anyone you know thinks they're a victim, call SAPD. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Tonight, San Antonio police still looking for the latest suspect in what's becoming a growing problem in our city. Road rage shootings. About 10 o'clock last night, officers say a driver opened fire on an SUV on Loop 410 near Broadway. That's near the airport. That SUV carrying a family, including a little boy who was hit by a bullet. This bullet, he found it in the pocket of his shorts. The 10 year old was grazed in the leg. He will now have a scar for the rest of his life because someone made a poor, impulsive decision. Tonight we spoke with that little boy's father. Looked like my son was gripping his legs in fear so much he cut himself until the slug bullet fell out of his shorts. My three kids terrified for an unprovoked, I, I did nothing to this, this man, this coward. I did nothing to him. And he opened fire on a 10, an 8, and a 6-year-old, and he hit a 10-year-old. And there was blood, but we have to find this coward. Coward's a good way to put it. If you think anything about, if you know anything about this road rage incident that can lead to the shooter, please call SAPD. Extreme punishment at the hands of a parent. Now, the details that we're about to tell you in the trial of a woman who's accused of starving her stepson to death are really difficult to hear, so we just want to give you that warning. The victim's 12-year-old brother took the stand today in this trial, and he described how Miranda Caceres treated his four-year-old brother, Benjamin Cervera. He says that Caceres would starve his little brother and sometimes force Cervera to drink hot sauce, toilet water, and hand sanitizer. She would usually force Benji to open his mouth by, grab, by grabbing his mouth and trying to open it. And Benji will usually cry because it hurts and it didn't. This hand sanitation tastes bad. Now, Cervera died in August of 2021, which the medical examiner ruled was caused by starvation. The 12 year old says that at the time he felt like he couldn't speak up. Gasares is charged with injury to a child, and if she's convicted, she faces life in prison. He went from a suspect to a victim and back again. Eric Contu in court today as he faces multiple charges of evading arrest with a vehicle, but the cases remain stalled 
as the Bear County DA's office asked to be removed from prosecuting him. Cantu was shot multiple times by then SAPD police officer James Brennan in 2022 while attempting to get away in a McDonald's parking lot. Brennan was fired from the department days later and later indicted by a grand jury. The judge hearing Cantu's case rescheduled today's hearing till the end of the month. She instructed prosecutors to be prepared to give a reason why the DA's office should be removed from Cantu's case and be ready to recommend another attorney who will take over prosecution. Tonight, a San Antonio man could spend the rest of his life in prison after admitting to supplying fentanyl laced drugs that caused four overdoses and three deaths this year. The U.S. Justice Department says that 67 year old Mark Stuhl pleaded guilty to charges of distribution of a controlled substance and distribution resulting in serious bodily injury. The DOJ says that Stuhl gave four people substances that contained a combination of meth and fentanyl and meth and heroin. Three of those people died. The fourth person overdosed but survived. Now, Stuhl could receive anywhere from 20 years to life behind bars, and he's going to be sentenced this summer. Let's go to your night beat news flash now. A controversial figure and a sports superstar. O.J. Simpson has died. The former NFL star and Heisman Trophy winner lost his battle with prostate cancer. His family made the announcement on social media. O.J. soared to fame as a member of the Buffalo Bills in USC, but later became infamous after his acquittal in the killings of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ronald Goldman in 1995. He later lost a multi-million dollar wrongful death lawsuit brought by the families of his ex-wife and Goldman. He ended up in prison for different charges. O.J. Simpson was 76 years old. Instagram taking steps to crack down on teenage extortion. It's an alarming trend where scammers convince teens to send them nude photos and then tell the teens they'll post those images online unless the victims send money or gift cards. The company announced Thursday it's testing new features to curb that crime, including blurring nude images sent in direct messages and letting users know when they've interacted with somebody who's engaged in financial sextortion. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Therefore, I, Ron Nuremberg, mayor of the city of San Antonio, in recognition thereof, do hereby proclaim April 18th through the 28th, 2024, to be San, San Antonio's official fiesta season. Viva Fiesta. Viva. Viva. That makes it official. You just heard our mayor officially declaring a fiesta season today during the city council meeting. The party with a purpose just one week away. The mayor also praised the citywide celebration for its rich cultural impact for both locals and visitors. Fiesta is also a big boost to businesses throughout San Antonio. And everybody getting ready for Fiesta. That includes TechStop. They're reminding everyone to drink responsibly and have a sober ride. Today, TechStop kicked off their 2024 Fiesta Drive Sober No Regrets campaign. During Fiesta, SAPD says they'll have more patrols downtown to help identify drunk drivers. If you do plan on attending Fiesta and drinking, always plan ahead. Have somebody that's going to get the group safely home. We totally support people having fun during Fiesta. Fiesta is a great fun event for all of our city. Um, decades and decades old and we want to continue to support that. Make sure you have a designated driver. Simply put, you can also get a ride share like Uber or Lyft, or you can take Via to get you home safely. And as your Fiesta station, we're hosting special watch parties exclusively for our KSAT insiders. So you see that QR code? Scan it. That's how you can get tickets for our Battle of Flowers party. We're also going to host one for Flambeau, so get your tickets right now. Now, this is something that's happening tomorrow. Our KSAT community partners are hosting a phone bank for a nonprofit that provides medical equipment to people who really need it. It's called Project Mend. That's the name of the nonprofit. They help people who don't have the money or are unemployed, don't have insurance, or they have gaps in their medical coverage. So if you donate, you could help people who can't afford to buy things like scooters or wheelchairs get them. During the phone bank, you can also ask about the Viva Mobility Resource Fair. That is happening Sunday, April 14th at Morgan's Sports Complex. And again, the phone bank is happening tomorrow. It's going to be from noon until 7 p.m. We want you to stay here for this. You're going to hear from a woman dealing with two things that unfortunately 
are common in San Antonio, diabetes and cancer. And those two things are also linked. We'll talk about how to stay healthy. Obesity, diabetes are global pandemics and they go hand in hand. When one increases, the other one increases and they're increasing at a tremendous pace. We need to act now and this type of events is what makes the difference for the future. UT Health San Antonio making moves to fight two of San Antonio's biggest problems, health problems that is, obesity and diabetes. Now, we've been telling you about the 2024 Binational Obesity and Metabolic Symposium happened earlier today. People who went got a chance to speak with doctors and health experts about treating and also preventing diabetes. What we want to do is bring awareness to the community and also collaborate between scientists and physicians so we can find better ways of treating obesity, diabetes. And that right there, that last story just proves that diabetes is really top of mind everywhere here in South Texas. But do you know that diabetes is also linked to cancer? It's important because according to UT Health San Antonio, 16% of people in the city, in San Antonio, have diabetes, 16%. That is higher than the national rate of 10%. Yeah, you're about to meet a woman, this woman. She survived diabetes and breast cancer, and she's hoping that you learn from her story so you stay healthy. You've heard pictures are worth a thousand words, but sometimes they're deceiving because this image of Virginia Cortez doesn't tell you what she actually is, a survivor. I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes uh, December of 2015 and I was diagnosed with breast cancer September of 2019. It's been a long journey for the 54-year-old. In the last eight years, she's lost weight, started diabetes medication, and finished cancer treatment. As Virginia continues to recover, she can't help but wonder how she got here. Had I not had diabetes, could I have prevented the cancer? Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's no clear answer for Virginia, but researchers have established a link between diabetes and cancers of the pancreas, liver, colon, and breast. A 2021 study in the medical journal Cancers found as many as 18% of cancer patients have diabetes. Diabetes is a chronic inflammatory disease that puts your body in override, and that can lead to some genes or some abnormal cells to proliferate and then eventually cause cancer. Dr. Carolina Solis Herrera is the chief of endocrinology at UT Health San Antonio. She treats patients like Virginia and says the best way to stay healthy is to eat more vegetables, walk often, and get regular checkups. All those factors together will count all for you to protect you from the complications. Now that she's in remission, Virginia sees light at the end of the tunnel. She shares her story with you, hoping that you learn from her experience. It is hard to change, but you'll change when you're ready to change. And I hope it's before you get diabetes. So something she said struck with me, the fact that if I didn't have diabetes, would I have had cancer? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just the unknown mm -hmm. out there. So, so many people fighting obesity, fighting diabetes, and they're kind of linked by yes. diet. Yes, and this is something that um, healthcare companies, your doctors, also the city is heavily involved with, and they're saying, yes, diet. Uh, if you call your health insurance plan, they can hook you up with a nutritionist. That's usually covered. Uh, the other thing, Medicaid, Medicare, they cover that too. But also, if you don't have any insurance, Metro Health, they have classes all around San Antonio where they have something called a wellness workshops where they help you sort of craft, uh, you know, a, a good diet. But I have to say something. I sat in on one of these classes that uh, UT Health San Antonio had, and I thought, you know, a lot of people in my family have diabetes mm -hmm. and have other issues, and I thought that I knew <laughs> everything, everything I needed to know. Everything there was to know, right? No, no. There's so much about uh, about uh, just a balanced diet, uh, just with with carbs and portion control, which I know is hard because we all love our tortillas and our and our rice and our beans, but we have to really control that. So yeah, a lot to learn, a lot, a lot to learn. But the point is that there are resources out there to help you. So take advantage of them. Absolutely. All right, let's go now to the Weather Center and our friend Adam Kasky, fresh off unveiling oh. the thermometer Thursday medal and talking about our weather headlines. The Kasky clips is the metal this year. It's the theme. It's another spinner where I like it. Fiesta 
eclipses me, and it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got yeah, a perfect the confetti and all that confetti. eclipses Caskey. Yeah, all I the like fun. It. Yeah. Oh, it was a good time. We had the mariachis out there today, and our first giveaway is tomorrow. We'll get to that. Uh, cool tomorrow morning, warm in the afternoon. Humidity returns on Sunday. That's going to lead to some fog, and then even a few storm chances once that humidity is here as we get into next week. So let's get right into our morning temperature trend and check that out. It'll be on the rise tomorrow morning, comfortably cool at 55 degrees. Then notice we're well into the 60s by Sunday and near 70 for morning low temperatures by Monday and Tuesday. That's because the humidity is back. The higher the humidity, the warmer the mornings. Tomorrow morning, 55 in San Antonio, 53 Helotus, 50 Castroville, Divine and Hondo, New Braunfels and Seguin right at 50 degrees. By noon, we're at 76 and then a high temperature of 83. So a similar temperature trend to today. Comfort comfortably cool in the morning comfortably warm in the afternoon, we could call it 83 uh, with low humidity out there. 83 in Poteet tomorrow, Bulverde, Bernie at 80 in Bandera, 85 the high. Now here's the newest drought monitor. This was updated today. It's updated every Thursday. Keep in mind, it does not take into account the recent rainfall we had. The rainfall cutoff is Tuesday at 7 a.m. our time. Then it takes a day and a half or two days to analyze it and then they issue it on Thursday. Anyway, this does not take into the recent rainfall. However, we didn't get a lot of rain in the most drought stricken parts of our area, particularly portions of the hill country and even Hondo to Pipe Creek over to Bandera, Kerrville, Comfort, Sister Dell, you, you get the idea. Rainfall was heaviest along and east of I-35 and even around parts of Bear County. Helotus had just under half an inch, Chavano Park over half an inch, but New Berlin over two inches, Seguin over two inches, Sutherland Springs over an inch. All the activity now pretty much east of the Mississippi, especially Great Lakes through the east coast, the mid-Atlantic, big wound up system. Man, that's the kind of rain. Oof, I get jealous of it when I see it because it's a big, broad system, slowly moving, widespread, soaking rainfall. Unfortunately for us, our rain chances are pretty much on the low end. 20% chance next Tuesday, then a 30% chance during Fiesta Fiesta next Thursday. So isolated chances next week. Dry dew points, 30s to even 40s, so you don't really feel the mugginess. However, by Sunday... It's going to be sticky and it's going to remain sticky for most of next week as well. And that's going to mean some morning fog Sunday and Monday afternoon. High temperatures not changing much will be generally just in the mid 80s, give or take a little bit. It's just you'll notice the humidity by Sunday and warmer mornings as well. Tomorrow we're going to be having some fun. Seguin Chevrolet, my very first Fiesta Metal giveaway of the season. And don't worry, I'll be back in town and stuff as we get into next week. I'll announce those locations later on. And we've got this info online and on social media. Anyway, live cam out there right now. Beautiful evening. It'll look a little cloudier by tomorrow at this time because of some high cirrus clouds greeting us, which should make for a good sunset, by the way. Well, just think next week at this time, Fiesta Fiesta yeah. will have been done. Yes. Fiesta will officially have been kicked off. Yes, I'm wow. excited for that. I know we're all excited for that. Yeah. But now we're going to talk about the new b-ball coach at UTSA. Yeah, it was an exciting time out of the campus of UTSA today because they introduced their new men's head basketball coach, Austin Klontz. This is a bright young man, and he is ready to lead the program to new heights. And the first round of the Masters was uh, suspended today due to darkness. we got the highlights coming up. going to be too cliche, but I am a proud Texan and um, I followed this program for a long time. And now Austin Clancho will help lead the UTSA men's basketball program in big board sports. UTSA Athletics introduced new head men's basketball coach Austin Clanch today at the school's Park West Fieldhouse. He was hired nearly a month ago, but since he was an assistant coach with Alabama at the time, he had to wait for the Crimson Tide's run in the NCAA men's basketball tournament to end before joining UTSA. Bama lost in the Final Four, so now he's here. Clanch is thankful to join an athletic program with a lot of great coaches, including Jeff Trailer. I, I don't even know the words to articulate um, just my first conversations with him and how we connected on our vision uh, for not just our teams, but I think for the program as a whole. And, you know, I, I want to be very clear, you know, I'm, I'm a Texas kid and, and this is a football state. And 
and it is a it is a blessing and it is a resource to have a coach who runs our football team like he does because it's a recruiting tool it's great not just for our team but for this athletic department as a whole so i'm very thankful for coach trailer um, as well as everyone else and i look forward to meeting everybody Members of the UTSA men's basketball team were on hand for the big announcement sitting in the front row. Case I told sports Nick Mantis was there. He has more with the seventh head coach in UTSA men's basketball history. Well, it's kind of a heartfelt press conference here, Larry, as Austin Klontz took the podium as the new UTSA men's basketball coach. He's a proud Texan. He's happy to be home. And he laid out some goals that he has for this program moving forward. You know, I just think for year one, again, establishing an identity of how we're going to play and what it's going to look like. You know, and you know, very simply put, I don't want teams to have fun playing UTSA. I want to be a tougher team. I want to be disruptive on the defensive end. I want to play a ferocious pace offensively. So just making sure we're doing that and implementing a style that's going to be here for years to come. When you recruit guys, again, you're not just recruiting them, you're recruiting their families. And you want to hear, um, you want to hear that they're, they're excited about the basketball, but also about the entire experience of what it means to be a student athlete at UTSA. You know, there's a lot of good things um, about San Antonio, about what this school offers. And I want guys that want to uh, experience um, that encompassing uh, experience of a student athlete here. And so, you know, identifying those guys that, that, you know, do what we want them to do on the court, but are going to embrace being here and, and what it means to be a roadrunner off the court. Coach Klontz also listed out his three pillars for the program. Number one, embrace the moment, then be a good teammate, and then earn the right to win. And winning is exactly what Roadrunners fans want to see as Coach Clonch takes the reins of this program. Larry, back to you. Thank you, Nick. The first round of the Masters started two and a half hours later than originally scheduled today due to bad weather, and the round was also suspended at 8 p.m. due to darkness. Tiger Woods had two birds and a bogey and sits at one under par through 13 holes before play was stopped. 2022 Masters champ Scotty Scheffler is in the hunt with the six under 66, getting a birdie two on the 12th hole out of the bunker. And your clubhouse leader is Bryson DeChambeau, thanks to a seven under 65. But it's just tricky out here. It can be super tricky and making sure that you play aggressively, but in a, in a safe manner to where it's not going to get you into too much trouble. So for me, as, as my game has progressed, I've learned to be uh, I try to be a little bit smarter out there on the golf course and not try and go for broke and just go for every flag, but place it in the right position. It's definitely nice in the preparation, you know, knowing that my game's in a good spot. And um, yeah, I was just kind of excited to get the week started. And um, so far, I'm off to a good start. Chimbo sits at seven under par with a one shot lead on Scheffler and 27 golfers will finish up their first round tomorrow morning. The Royals roughed up the Astros after the break. John Gray and the Rangers closed out their three-game series with the Oakland A's this afternoon in Arlington. Top of the second inning, Seth Brown takes that changeup deep to right field and gone. 378 feet later, the A's lead at 1-0. Now, A's pitcher J.P. Sears had it going on today, carrying a no-hitter into the seventh inning until it was broken up. A's win 1-0, taking two of three from the champs. Astros at the Royals and KC got all the runs they needed in the first inning. Bobby Witt Jr. goes the opposite way for a two-run shot to cap off the Royals' nine-run first frame. He went four for five with five RBI and two homers to help the Royals win 13-3 to, to sweep the three-game series. So Houston will now host a three-game set with Texas starting tomorrow. In Texas lead, the Naturals scored twice in the top of the 10th inning to beat the Missions tonight 2-zip. To and in girls soccer, Salina beat Bernie 1-0 today to win the U.S. UIL Class 4A state championship. Now the Bernie boys will play for a state title tomorrow afternoon. I got to be honest with you, Larry. I wasn't really crazy about any of those last few scores you gave. <laughs> Why not? The local teams were lost. The local teams lost. Yeah, just making sure. Yeah. Because there's always another delivery with you. Your delivery was fine, Larry. Thank you. It just was the you know the okay. news you brought. Okay. I know. How'd your like White it. Sox do today? They didn't play, oh, so, okay. so they're good winners. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>